Eight years after the most devastating terror attack on American soil, the accused architects of 9-11 will be transferred from military custody at Guantanamo Bay, where they've been held for years, to a federal lockup in New York and tried in a civilian courthouse just blocks from ground zero. I fully expect to direct prosecutors to seek the death penalty against each of the alleged 9-11 conspirators. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the self-proclaimed mastermind of 9-11, is the headline defendant. But the others are also major al-Qaeda players. Walid bin Atash, known as Khalad, is accused of running terror camps. Ramzi bin al-Sheib, the government says, trained the 9-11 hijackers. And money men Ali Abdul Aziz Ali and Mustafa al hasawi allegedly helped pay for the attacks. Our family is looking for justice. John Cartier, who lost his brother James on 9-11, is looking forward to confronting the suspects. Look these guys right in the eye and, you know, maybe have a few choice words for them. But other families are angry with the Obama administration's decision to bring top suspected terrorists to the United States. My son was murdered, inhumanely murdered by terrorists. Judith Reese, who clutched a photo of her dead son during a recent visit to Guantanamo, thinks the al-Qaeda suspects may cause more pain once they're moved to New York. They are going to be able to sit and gloat over what they've done. Beyond the emotional worries are legal concerns about the case. The suspects were subjected to harsh interrogation techniques, for years held in secret prisons with no access to attorneys. And Khalid Sheikh Mohammed's confession came after he was waterboarded 183 times in one month. Still, CBS News legal analyst Andrew Cohen says the government can prevail. Opinion, the fact that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is going to stand trial in federal court in New York means the government has extra evidence that doesn't uh, rely upon his statements, that it feels that it can win a case without this uh, waterboarding information. And the Justice Department has a strong record in terror cases with an 88 percent conviction rate. The blind sheikh, Abdul Rahman, and World Trade Center bomber Ramzi Youssef, for example, were both convicted in New York. Some critics, though, worry another high-profile terror trial will make New York even more of a target for radicals. But Attorney General Holder says security forces will be ready. And I am quite confident that they can meet the security challenges posed by this case. It will be several months before any trial can begin. In fact, the prisoners won't be transferred to New York until sometime after the first of the year. And not all top al-Qaeda prisoners will be moved to civilian courts. Attorney General Holder also said today the accused mastermind of the USS Cole bombing and four others will face military trials. And still other top terror suspects at Gitmo remain in some kind of legal limbo. Katie? And Bob, if all the 9-11 suspects have already admitted their guilt, why a trial? Well, they have essentially confessed, many of them, in a number of forums. When I was at the military tribunal at Guantanamo Bay, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, for example, stood up many times and pleaded guilty to a number of terror atrocities, said he wanted to die, wanted to be a martyr, and said his co-conspirators would also plead guilty. But the government still needs to prove the case, or at least get guilty verdicts, and Attorney General Holder says he thinks that can happen. And, Bob, this is a major step, I know, towards President Obama's promise of shutting Guantanamo down. So what happens next? It's still a mess, Katie. There's still 200 prisoners at Guantanamo Bay. Many of them will be sent to other countries. Some will be released. There's still a hardcore number of about 10 to 12 terrorists that they don't know what to do with. And the problem of Guantanamo today apparently took a political casualty of sorts. We learned today that White House uh, Chief Counsel Greg Craig announced his intention to resign. Craig was in charge of designing the shutdown Guantanamo policy, and now we know that's badly behind schedule. In fact, Eric Holder said again today they will not make the January 22nd deadline. Katie? All right, Bob Orr reporting from Washington tonight. Thanks very much.